Peace, family. Happy New Year. Or January 2nd? No, I'm just kidding. All right, family. I am back in here with the great continuum, Black Marriage. And I'm so excited about this couple here. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm going to always talk about marriage so we can get some insights to what is it like to be married? What make people get married? Like, how do you deal with being married? Like, that's, that's so real right there. That's so real right there. So, while we're doing that, pronounce your last name for me. I don't want to mess it up. Kofer. Kofer. Oh, just like that. Okay, these are the Kofers. <laughs> All right. All right, these are the Kofers. So, my first question to y'all, how long have y'all been married? Mm -hmm. Oh, we got married, um, it was, uh, we got married in April. Nope. Hmm? Nope. We did not get married in April. <laughs> we married in April. <laughs> no, we did not get married in April. <laughs> when did y'all get married? We got married in March. March, March 20th. <laughs> oh, wow. So what made y'all want to get married? I'm just curious. In March 20th of 2016. Um, okay. That's a good question. Why did we get I'm married? I'm just curious. We were bored one day and we said, eh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, had, we, just, um, we had a lot of time to you know, talk about each other, learn about each other's interests, um, learn about the directions that we both wanted our lives to go. And we just reached a point where uh, it was it was time, you know. It was um, we were in full support of everything that you know uh, each of us was doing, and it took me, you know, because I was the one that I was the one that held it up uh, naturally. You know, um, she had been ready for a while, and you know it was a new situation for me. So it took me a little longer to come around than it took her. But you know, you, you, your brain will get the best of you, you know. And it was time to it was it was it was time. So how did y'all meet? We met on eHarmony. So um, really? yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we met on eHarmony. Um, yeah. I had broken up with someone the year before, um, and so right around, I guess beginning of beginning or middle of March, I was like, okay, I'm gonna like it's been you know four or five months now. <laughs> I'm ready to like I've, I've had some time to reflect. I'm ready to start on this new you know journey. And so I had never done online dating before. And so I figured I'm in this relatively new city. I've only I've lived there less than two years, so I'm still learning people. And so I was like, you know, I'd like to expand my pool of potential suitors, right? <laughs> people to date. So I um, I signed up for this six month subscription on eHarmony because I figured like that way I can give it a real honest try. Like I won't be like I go out on one bad date and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm out. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a real try. Six months that felt like a good time frame, and then. He and I were matched maybe three or four weeks in. I had only gone out on like one or two other dates before we were matched. We were matched, I think, at the end of March. Wow. Yeah. So what was it about his profile that you liked? And, and vice versa for you too. Sure, what was sure, about her? sure. So interestingly enough, we were a flex match. What so, so on eHarmony, they have like match, and the, or at least at the time, I don't know, I'm the mom, but they have match, <laughs> and then they have flex match. And flex match means you have some things in common, but we're not sure based on how you answered these questions if you guys are going to be great, right? Um, so, we always have, we always go back and forth on this because I think I was the one who initiated contact, but he thinks he was the one who initiated contact. <laughs> right. I don't, you can't really check the record. Yeah, I was like, we don't have a way to check the record, but. I think that I reached out to him uh, because I saw his profile and then we started doing this thing that they had called guided communication which is like a series of questions that you can like give multiple choice answers to and you get to set up the multiple choices and so like it's must-haves and can't stand so what are things you must have in a relationship what are things you can't stand Wow. Um, what it and then some of them were like multiple choice questions so what is you what is an ideal Friday night look like to you um, would you rather do this versus that? that? Those kind of questions. So we had gone through that. And then I kind of ghosted a little bit <laughs> because my friend was, was um, having a baby and I was going to New York to talk through this baby shower. And so I just got caught up in work and going there and all of this. And so a couple of weeks went by. And so I checked back into the site because I got there. My mom lives in New Jersey. And so I was staying at her house, and the night before the shower, we had finished doing stuff, and she says, you know, how's the online dating going? And I was like, I haven't checked it in a couple of weeks. Let me go on. And there was a message from him that said, hey, if you don't want to do these guided questions anymore, I'm still interested. Like, here's my number. So my mom pulled up his profile, 
scours the whole thing and says, Dude, much later. Yeah, she says, He seems nice. You, I, I like that he reads. <laughs> I like that he reads. You should give him a call since he reached out. So I did. And that was our first time. Yeah, and I, I, um, I ended up on eHarmony because uh, it was actually a recommendation from a friend of mine because uh, the woman who I was dating before her had, um, she become like, she, she had a reputation of, you know, kind of being a, a, a nightmare with some of my friends. She wasn't very nice to my friends. Nobody she wasn't very nice like to my coworkers. She was very pushy, um, you know, came to work a few times and had some confrontations with them. Um, going after their Facebook pages. She was really, really insecure, um, really uncomfortable with anyone who I had any sort of relationship with. Um, so I had a friend who, and this is, you know, the good part about growing up, you know, being older, you have friends that are older. So, you know, you have, you know, you have people that, uh, I think we were talking about a, a certain fight that was going on earlier uh, when we were talking off, mm -hmm. off camera mm -hmm. and how people handled it, right? There's the right. people who are just gonna kind of sit there and laugh and be like, oh, this is crazy, oh, look at them go. And then there are the people who are gonna be like, this isn't right, maybe we should find something better, right? right? And right. so I, you know, I'd run into the friends that were like, well, this isn't right, maybe we should find something better. And, you know, I, my reputation as far as dating wasn't, wasn't the best. So they said, you know, I think you can really find someone on eHarmony because, you know, you don't, you know, need to be just going out and finding someone random. You know, it's, it's more that, you know, you have a certain personality um, mm -hmm. and so you need to find a certain personality. And that just kind of made it a little bit easier for me. So uh, they actually had a free pass. They had a free three month pass that they had wow. used. So they gave it to me and I took the time. I set up a profile and I found her. I found her. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and yeah, everything she said, it just, it just kind of went from there. So, wow. Yeah. So let me ask you this. When 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 y'all were looking on the ER, this is look, I see the commercials all the time. I'm like, wow, these real people? Yeah. But I'm sitting here with two people who yeah. met on E Harmony. Yeah. Y'all they need to pitch y'all the commercial. They, they definitely will get more hits. We'll be like, what? They met on E Harmony. I think, I think I'll still my thing out. I did I did at some point. I, did, I, did at some point. Yeah. I think when we got engaged. I put, I was like, hey, you know, because I went back and I updated the information. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we never heard from them. Yeah. So. Uh, see, they they gonna you gonna hear from them now. We like that <laughs> in harmony. Doctor Flo and her husband to be up on here. Okay. So with that being said, when y'all were growing up, did y'all ever think that you were gonna get married one day when you were younger? I were well, you like, nah, I ain't never get married. Yeah, it, I didn't have a strong feeling about it one way or the other. Um, <laughs> It, it was one of those things that seemed like you do when you get older. And I remember being like 12 or 13 and saying to somebody, oh, yeah, I'll be, when I get 25, when I turn 25, I'm going to get married and I'm going to have three kids and I'm going to do, you know, but it was, you it was 25. more than, yeah, it was just 25, right. It, 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 25 seemed old, right? Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> that's old, right? That's when you like do stuff. Um, and I was like, my mom's like 25, right? Like, I have no concept of like, no, no my mom is not 25, right? I'm 12. Like, do the math flow. But <laughs> that's what I thought. I was like, I'm 25. I'm going to have three kids. It'll be fine. Um, and then as I got older, I was like, well, maybe not 20. But I don't know. Maybe at some point if I meet the right person. Right. Um, and as I got older, I really started thinking like it, a lot of it really depends on if I meet the right person. I, I knew that I was interested in having a life partner. Um... But I also realized that a lot of stereotypes about marriage are not things that I was really. Go ahead. Sorry. Keep going. Sorry about that, y'all. Hi, Calvin. I know. Sorry, y'all. Keep going. So um, you said it was stereotypes and you yeah, heard growing up and you never get married. Stereotypes about marriage, like that you were supposed to be, you know, docile and sweet and, you know, and bake cookies and, you know, and to do all these things. And this is nothing against people who are docile and sweet and bake cookies. But anybody who knows me knows I do bake cookies on occasion. But don't don't expect them from me. Um, and I I think I'm nice, right? I'm yeah. sweet. But <laughs> you know the, the, this sort of like you know you you kind of fall back, and this other person runs your life, and you put your needs second to theirs, and you're always worrying about it. And that just felt burdensome, and it oh. felt like it felt a little bit like dimming my own light to fit inside of someone's box 
And so I, I as, as I started entering into my 20s and coming into my own, and thanks to Spellman for really giving me the, the confidence to say, this is who I am and this is what I want, um, I started questioning, like, I could do this. I still want to, like, partner, but it has to look a certain way. Right on. Yeah. What about you? Uh, growing I grew up um, single parent household is just uh, my mother and my brother um, and you know I, uh, my father left when I was three years old so as far as marriage I'd never really given it much thought and it, it wasn't really talked about in my in, you know in my home uh, I had a lot of friends growing up and they were sort of in the same situation um, one parent household single parent household so it just wasn't really anything that I ever really gave a whole lot of thought to I didn't really understand I understood what it was, I guess, what it was supposed to be, but it never really, I guess, talk of it never really impacted me. Um, like, the only time we talked about marriage is if we'd see some celebrity on television, you know, we're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to marry her one day, and, you know, <laughs> get a woman like her, right? That was, that, that was all, that was, that was the most, you know, um, the you, most conversation that we had when we, yeah, right, you know, <laughs> that was the most conversation you know, that we had, you know, growing up as far as marriage went. So, um, you know, over time you start to learn about what it is um, and what you want from it. But, you know, just growing up at a young age, it, yeah, it never really. How did you know you wanted to marry him? He was the first person I dated who lets me be me. Oh, wow. Um, in this way he doesn't make me feel bad for being who I am um, and even though we are completely opposite personality types <laughs> he he always finds a way for us to kind of meet in the middle and so he will pull me to be a little more introverted when I need to be and that's good because sometimes I need yeah. to rest and sometimes I need time away and sometimes I've overextended myself but he'll also step up to be more extroverted when he knows that I need it and I don't even know that I could have put that into words until he left because he's in Illinois right now for school and when he left in August I realized about a month in how out of balance I was and it has been the last four months have been really trying for me not because of the distance you know in terms of our relationship but because him being here provides a certain level of balance and consistency in my life and it reminds me like you can't go nonstop without refueling and you can't do that but like because he's gone I I, I can do that and you know like it, and so there is but it's the first relationship where I've ever had somebody who just without question unconditionally knows how I am and lets me be me and isn't you know trying to change that in any way what about you how did you know you really want to marry her uh, just, I mean, even in the short time that we were together, I learned more about myself just um, being around her. I, I, I learned um, what my strengths were, what my weaknesses were. I just got a better understanding of how the world is supposed to look. Um, because, you know, you grow up and you hang around certain people and you live a certain way. And you think, well, this is, this is how the world is. And then you meet someone who shows you, like, no, this is what the world is. This is what it means to have people you know, who really love you. This is what it means to, you know, be with a family, right? This is what it means to have a support system. Um, this is what it means, you know, to have someone else look at your life and uh, just make things better, make things easier, make things run, you know, a lot smoother, you know? And also you, you, you wake up one day and you realize, I, I feel the same way, you know, um, to, I, I feel the love, but I also feel a serious you know want and need to give it back in the same way you know to wake up you know every day you're like well how can i make her life better and it was just something that for you to speak up but go ahead okay <laughs> <laughs> so, okay go ahead yeah, See, he, was, he needs the microphone yeah <laughs> I, i'm gonna have to get you a mic but go ahead um but but um yeah i guess um uh, i guess it was just uh bring this up. it's it's um yeah and she just, she just, things were better. I should just say that things were better. Um, I was happier and I was really, really motivated to try to make her as happy as she had made me, which I don't think is going to be possible. But you know, every day you wake up and you give it your best effort. Right so. on, right on. Um, so when y'all got married, did y'all environment change? No. 
and your friends didn't change or nothing mm -hmm. like that? In fact, so I think he's going to have a different answer to this. Okay. I think, I, think him, I think us moving in together was more was a, a bigger adjustment for him than for me. And I'll say this is why, because he's probably not going to say this. The reason that, so we dated for three and a half years before we got engaged. Uh, um, yeah, somewhere around there. Um, and Tariq said he was ready to get married about two years in. And he was like, can we get married but not live together? <laughs> that, that thing we could do. Because for him, as an introvert, he just wants his own space. He wants to be left alone. He, he was like, we can get married. I can come over. We can hang out. And then I can go back home. And I was like, babe, that's... I'm not. I'm not doing it. That's, that. That marriage is for someone, and that marriage will work. That marriage won't work for me. Um, and so I let him take his time to figure out to get to a place where he could not want to live in separate places. He probably still does to this day. But for from my vantage point, I kind of felt like the moving in was just confirmation of what I already knew, which was. Like, we weren't putting on airs. We weren't pretending to be people who we weren't. And so, to me, moving in, I didn't learn anything new about him. Because he hadn't been hiding who he was already. So when I would go over to his apartment and stay, when I was like, I already know how he is. I know he doesn't dust. I know that he has multi <laughs> he has an addiction to multiple TVs. I know <laughs> that he's going to eat oatmeal in the morning and, you know, and take his bowl with him, right? And so there's always going to be a bowl circulating in and out of the house. Because it was like, there, like there was nothing about his routine that was special because we were dating and then it changed when we moved in together. So for me, it was sort of this very seamless transition to moving in together, which we did about a year or so before we, you know, decided to get right. married. So like, it, like to me, it's just been one long relationship and I see how much our relationship has grown, but there's not this inflection point when we moved in together and an inflection point when we got married or an inflection, like it's just been one long continuous thing and so those points when people are like does it feel different being married not at all mm. not so not we, one bit before we get to your um your response did your friends change at all so not people get married their friends change they don't hang out as many or not nothing like that with no i i mean i you know i mean that, again that's one of the beautiful things about us so i had a group of girlfriends that we would have dinner once a week um, and that has actually changed because we've all gotten really busy, but not be, it didn't happen after we got married. Um, it sort of happened as everybody, everybody's work responsibilities and other, you know, commitments have really exploded. Um, and the day of the week stopped working because now we're going to city council meetings and we're doing, you know, like, and so we're trying to shift and figure out like, when can we do this? But in terms of, of getting married, my friends haven't changed. My level of engagement with my friends hasn't changed. You're nice to his um, friends. Yeah, I like no, this I'm friend. just laughing. The other so, person. So, oh, she, oh, she, she takes, <laughs> she takes, takes my friends friend. over. I, I, come, okay, I, I come second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> them. You know, it's time for what can, what can she come? Well, I can't make it. Yeah, but can she? Can she? Come? <laughs> okay. Like, you know, you maybe you know yes or no, but can she make it? So, right. You know, right. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, as far as moving in together to your first point. Uh, it was it was easy, like she said. It was easy. Not a whole lot changed, uh, but I think that's because we we had a good discussion about you know just what it was gonna be. Um, and he has a man cave. Right, what it was gonna be um, to live together, and you know not a man cave. I have a side room. Man cave. That, <laughs> There's a sign that says man cave, y'all. It's a man cave. It's a Baltimore Raven sign. So, okay. you know, <laughs> man right, cave. Right. Um, but but you know as she said, I'm you know I'm introverted um, to a point. So it's just, you know, I just needed just some area that I could go, you know, maybe for an hour or so um, that there's just nobody but me. Uh, I know she throws, um, she has a lot of get togethers. They have, you know, like dinner crews that come by, um, get parties and get together. I mean, I think she threw like a divorce party at, <laughs> uh, at the house at some point, you know, and then there's times where there's times where, you know, when that happens, I got to kind of go, you know, on my way. And there's times where it's like, well, I don't really have anything to do. So I'll just kind of, you know duck down in my corner, right? right so, right. you know, I just said, as long as I have just somewhere that I can go in this home to just, you know, be with my, you know, be alone with my thoughts, then I'm, I'm good with that. So, um, and to your second question, which was honestly the only thing that I asked for when we moved in, because I'm, I'm pretty easy going, so whatever she's got going, I'll find a way to, uh, I'll find a way to deal with it, yeah. Um, as far as friends, yeah, oh, I have an entirely new friend circle now. Um, and there were, I, I think I think when I, when I when I linked up and started meeting more of her friends, um, 
and you know they're 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 she has a distinct group of friends very professional very outstanding um fun and a lot of friends that i were i was going into the relationship with were sort of on the other end of the spectrum um and i i, I got a chance to i guess really see what friendship was like they really care about her her friends are in her corner they've always been in her corner and you kind of look back at your own circle and you say well if, if, if things go down, you know, there are some people here that will leave me high and dry. Um, and they won't leave her high and dry, but they also won't let things go down. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's just, and so just to, to, to see them and how they surround themselves with her and the relationship that they have, you know, it makes you envious, right? Like, I would like to have that. And they welcomed me in the same way, so I couldn't be more happy. Even, you know, Christy over here mm -hmm. just talking about the microphone. <laughs> so. Yes, Christy you know, came back and had her even, meeting with right, him every Chris, day. Right? I got to check right? in and see what's going on with Tareen. Yeah. That's right. I love it. Yeah. How do it work with your families? Because they say when you marry someone, you marry their family. How is that with your family and her family? It, it's been a tougher adjustment for her. Yeah. It's been a much tougher adjustment for her. I, I'm an introvert. I come from a family full of introverts. So, you know, when we take a trip together... And, you know, she's the first one. Oh, man, we should make this our trip song. And, you know, we should sing something on the way up there. My family's <laughs> like, how about we just turn the radio up and hold the rest of the noise down, right? <laughs> right? Like, that's, that's my family. But also, I mean, you know, two, there's, there's only two that she has to say. Um, my mom is out here. My brother's out here. So, you know, there's not a whole lot um, of people that she really has to, uh, or a whole lot of family members that she has to adjust to. But it's, it's definitely been a bigger strain on her than me, I would say. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, the big thing is that, it, you know, every family has its own culture. And so when we first started dating, I'll never forget, I had gone ho I had gone home to the East Coast for Christmas. And so, you know, I was talking to him on Christmas and I was like, so what are you guys doing? And he was like, nothing. And I was like, what do you mean nothing? And I was like, well, are you eating? Are you cooking? And he was like, we got some nachos. <laughs> I was like, for Christmas, you all have some nachos and you're doing nothing? Like, <laughs> so the nice thing about the Kofers is that they, the all, th all three now, I guess four of us, um, is that they have, like, over time I have poisoned the well. <laughs> because this year I got them to wear Christmas socks with me. Uh oh. We, um, his brother rented a van and we went and went to see all the lights um, or the little light installations around town. Um, we went to an ugly Christmas sweater party together. Yeah. So, like, the things that I really enjoy, I have really appreciated that they have welcomed me in in that way. I think probably the hardest thing, and I don't think Sean will mind me saying this, has been <laughs> my relationship with Sean for the la for a while. Um, and part of that was because he was, you know, in, a, in an area of growth and development, right? Um, and... Um, and so we really had a sort of come to Jesus talk earlier this year about what he wanted for the relationship. And he really he apologized. He said, you know, I'm sorry that our relationship hasn't been what it could be. Um, a lot of that is, you know, where I was developmentally and what I was up to, which was not always the best. And so I really want to turn the table and I give a lot of credit to him for turning that table and really reaching out and establishing the relationship. Um, and so that's been really nice because my family is 3,000 miles away. I don't get to spend as much time with them as I would like. Right. And so they are my family here. And so it's nice to be able to have that with them, be able to, you know, go to Jelly Belly Factory and you know, do all the like silly kid stuff that I like to do. Um, and they, they have certainly indulged me. I think most of the time they're laughing at me. Um, I don't really care. So it works for everyone, right? Like they get entertainment and I get the joy of a four year old who doesn't know that her parents right. are totally annoyed at whatever they've asked them to do, right? right. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect match, but yeah. How do you all deal with disagreements in your marriage? Um, I guess it's what, talk them? Yeah. Talk them out, I guess. Um, we fuss at each other a little bit. Yeah. There, aren't a, there aren't a ton <laughs> of them. We don't have a ton. That's yeah, true. there aren't many. Um, Partly but... because we laugh about most of the things that we do disagree about. So, right. there, like, a lot of times we will have these, like, fake, you know, I don't even call them fake, like, fake arguments <laughs> about stupid stuff. Like, one of our ongoing arguments is whether or not the dishwasher is a drying rack or a functional dish space <laughs> washer, which yeah. washes space dishes. That will be an ongoing fight until the day that we die, right? Okay. Um, you know, and so, but, it, but it's not one that either one of us is like really angry about. It's more so the fun of having this disagreement. Yeah. Um, so the times that we really are upset about something, 
at first, so we had two different styles. And at first, mm. Tareen's style was, all right, bet. And <laughs> no, for real. All right, bet, watch. And then I'm never going to do this, this, and this again. Or I'm just going to fix whatever. And at one point, we had a sit-down conversation. I was like, this isn't going to work if you retreat into yourself and say, all right, bet every time something makes <laughs> you mad and just shut down. It's only going to work if we talk about it and we can come to some sort of understanding. Right on. Um, and so that's what I mean by like when I talk about like our relationship growing over time because there's not an inflection point. It wasn't like, okay, now and then on you know January 2nd, that cha- it was like over yeah. time though, I see that when he's upset about something, he will say to me, that really made me upset. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. And it took time. It took time. Yeah. Yo, that's why when you uh, when you asked the question, I was like, well, now no, but there was a point. Yeah. There was a point, and a lot of it was yeah, just kind of personality clashes and just ways to handle certain things. Because my family's like that. If we have a disagreement, we'll just go on our separate directions, and then as time goes by, you know, it's like ah, that one, you know, all right, what's going on? And we're back, right? Right. Um, whereas with her, you know, when you're when you're married, you can't you can't get away with that stuff. You're the same house y'all are gonna see each other every day and i think the biggest thing for me was just understanding like none of this is really a big deal mm. none of this is a big deal right it's the thing even with the dishwasher <laughs> it's just not a big deal yeah. right so uh that was that was the biggest thing that, and you know just and and also i mean I've, I've been in situations you know um before she came around that have been big deals right so i'm like mm. if this is the extent of what we're you know at each other's throats about then it's just something you got to let go. But not let go. Talk no, it out. No, no, I get that. Talk I it out, that. right? Talk it I out. I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, do y'all ever seek counsel from anyone? Or is that important in your relationship? You <laughs> might be talking about that on the way over here. <laughs> 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 we were looking over some of the questions. So Mama well, Rose said yeah. some of the questions. I did. So I, I right. said we all were all looking over, over some of the We both got to this one. We, we just kind of looked one. at each and other like... like I mean, some people talk to like Maybe some people talk should. to folks without talking about what it is. Yeah, yeah. You we, know what I we, mean. We, we've we've gotten some fun advice um, that we put into practice. Like I think if what is it if we um, <laughs> if we if we have a disagreement or an argument begins, you what you do is you um you strip down naked <laughs> and you go into the kitchen <laughs> and you just hold hands <laughs> and it's just. It's fight just, with somebody right. when you're naked. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it's, that. It's just, it's just a level of awkwardness, right? But it's like, but can you still be uh, angry, right? Can right. You still, if right? you can, there's probably something you really need <laughs> yeah, to do. Yeah, if, you, if, right. if you're really angry. Because yeah. by the time you get your socks off, you're like, what are we doing here? Because <laughs> you're laughing as you make the trip, right? That's You're funny. laughing as you make the trip. Get so you. Yeah, right. So um, I like that. But as far as counsel, no, we've never reached a point where we've needed to seek counsel. Um, I would be open though if it ever came to that, you know. Um, as long as I, I think we'd both be open to something like that if it came, because you run into a problem where it's like, no, I'm not doing that. That's not. But but no, I'd always be open to it. You know, I mean, you, step one is you know keep things intact. We've also done a lot of like the stuff together. So like yeah. we've read over the you know hundred and one questions to ask each other, you know, and like stuff like that. And I will I will send each other articles when we see something. Um, sometimes the articles are in jest, like why you should use your dishwasher to wash right. your dishes. Right. <laughs> right. But other times the articles are about like you know like when 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 he was first matched in Illinois for his program, I was like okay, you know I. I've not done a long distance relationship like this, especially not with an an introvert who hates to talk on the phone. So I was like, we need to kind of figure out like, what are some of the tips and tricks? And so I've talked to other friends who did long distance. And so one of the things they said was never leave without knowing when you're going to see each other again. Mm, So you always have something to look forward to. So we, even if it's like, as he's getting ready to head to the airport, we're like, all right, babe, let's book this ticket. So we know (laughs) we're going to see each other, you know, like, so that there's always something concrete to look forward to. Um, And just taking that time to kind of invest in the relationship and finding things to be able to watch together and stuff like that. So we really try to do a lot of that stuff. We don't have someone that we are, you know, we've sought counsel from who has, like, answered questions for us. But I think on a case, I think we're close with our friends. And so if something comes up that we're working through, he might go to his friends and say, you know, what do you guys think about this? Or I might go to my friends and say, what do you guys think about that? Um, The ones you trust. The ones you trust. Yeah. The ones you trust, yeah. The the big thing I think is, um, and this was part of, and I know Christy is going to laugh at this if she's still watching, is after my last relationship, I came up with this list of 35 qualities that my next partner had to have. 
Christy and several other people who were, you know, in my circle were like, girl, you asking for too damn much. It was like, you remember when Chili had that, had that show, What Chili Wants? And somebody was like, what Chili Wants is too damn much. And so I, I whittled it down to like these five qualities. And one of them was... I like to hear these five. Oh, now I have to think about them. Okay. Um, I, I, I can list them off. But one of them was having a male mentor. Because one of my relationships, what I found was that he was not accustomed to having anybody like check him, right? Mm -hmm. um, and tell him, mm, you're not right about this, right? And so it, for me, it was sort of, it was tied up in like having a male mentor and somebody and being able to admit that you're not always right. Um, and that was a real ego issue for him. Mm -hmm. And so that, that stood out to me as something like, you know, I, I, there were lots of things I enjoyed about that relationship, but that was one of the things where, like, when you have a disagreement, you can't come to a resolution because you you dug your heels in and you can't admit that maybe I could have done these things differently. And so that was really important to me. And so I remember on one of our very first dates, I asked him, because I was going through my list, like, all right, before I before we go out too long, let me make sure I got my five here. I was like, so when you go to a party, are you willing to dance? Or <laughs> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Where do you work or are you in school? Question mark. <laughs> right. <laughs> Going yeah. over my list of qualities. Um, like, so on the scale of do you believe in God or there are elephants all the way down, what is your theological right. belief? Right. Like, I was really going through the list. And one of the things I asked him about was male mentors. And he mentioned two people over the course of the time. One was Deputy Donald Northcross, who actually officiated our wedding. And he's, oh, wow. Yeah, he's yeah. over the OK program. Okay, yeah. And, and Tareem was in the OK program growing up. Wow. And so that was, that was an important mentor. And the other one was um, Ezra Curry. From who was a member of his church, yeah. and he told this whole story about how he took um, Ezra's daughter out on this date, and he told him before they went on the date that he was going to have her back at whatever time it was. And then the things happening as they did, they got back late. And when he got back, Ezra said to him, did you tell me what time you were going to bring her back? And he said, yeah. And he was like, and is it that time right now? And he said, no. Oh, yeah, he said, I started going down yeah. the list of reasons. Like, right. well, this happened, and this happened. And he was like, hold on, hold on. Now, you, you said you were going to have her back at this time, and you didn't do it. So just own up to it, right? You said you were going to do it, and it didn't happen. And it was one of those things that just kind of stuck with me, right? It's like I said it, so I need to... You know, I need to either make it happen or take responsibility right when it didn't happen. You know, when these things don't happen. So he just kind of stopped me in my place. And it was just one of those lasting memories that I've kind of tried wow. to stick with, you know, um, even today. So, yeah. So that stood out to me as like somebody who's counselable, someone who's coachable, someone who is willing to talk about the things that you know, that may, they may need to do differently. Someone who's willing to take, have accountability for their own actions. And that was a really important quality for me. So. Wow, Christy says she thought she was crazy for sure. <laughs> no, I like the comments here. I was crazy. I was crazy. I like the list. The, so you got to work with salt and salt. Yeah, yeah. not thirty five. You know? Some of them also were a little repetitive. Right? Can you give me one that was like, like, like you was kind of like? What one was like kind of repetitive? Like what was one? Um, was like, you said that like five times. Yeah, I, well, I think, you know, it's one of those things like, well, you know, when you're in the desert, everything's that y'all mirages start to look like water. You know? right. So, like, there were, there were lots of things about, you know, about essentially getting at that, that, you know, coachable, willing to admit they're wrong, um, having a mentor, having a counselor. Like, and I was like, all right, maybe we could just drill this down to one thing about that. Like, what is the thing you are looking for in that regard? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you hit on something. Is is spirituality or religion important in, in you guys' marriage? It is. It is for me. I I would say um, to have a belief in something. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as like you know, like I try to get to church as often as I can. If she doesn't want to go, it's fine. Um, you know, whatever she chooses to believe, it is fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I know who I am and the the path that I want to take, and I'm more than happy and loving and respectful of whatever path she wants to take. Wow. So, I mean, we've never had an impasse in terms of that, yeah. but, I mean, I just think, you know, we were, I, she's not out here worshiping Satan or anything. So, <laughs> so, we're, so you know, we're, so we're fine, right? Like, that was the, I think that was the only thing, spirit, you know, spiritually, I know. Like, yeah, you know, just, you know, believe in, just have something to motivate you. Yeah. You know, something to keep you on the up and up. And, you know, that Beautiful. that's... Yeah. It's worked out so far. 
What about you? Absolutely. I mean, to me, it, it was it was more, that was one of the things on my list of five um, was having somebody who you know had a guiding belief and core belief, um, and it, you know, in God because that's something that that I have as well. Um, I'm not a member of a church, and so I will I visit um, often. Um, and I, that's a, that's probably a longer conversation about why I'm not a member of a church and why I go to Bedside Baptist and Pastor, Pastor Pillow <laughs> ministers to me every week. Um, but it, yeah, it is important to me that we have, what we share that same foundation, um, that grounds us when things are good and bad. Mm. So, okay. With that being said, um, children, do you ever think you're going to have children? You don't want to have children or... Not a clue. She said it best. We, when we, you said it best, right? <laughs> when we were up here. I think she said, you know, if we're 90, if we turn 90 and we look back and we have no children, I think we will have enjoyed the ride. Um, if we're 90 and we look back and we have five children, we will have enjoyed the ride. Right. So we it's haven't, a ride. yeah, it'll just be a different ride. So we haven't, you know, made uh, plans for children. Um, but like I said, if, if, if time goes and things happen, I mean, I, I think we're both on board. That's beautiful. Yeah. Do y'all have, like, nieces and nephews? or? No, no, no I don't. Yeah, um, on his side, no. On my, on my side, side no. yes. My side, no. Um, and then we have tons of friends with kids who yeah, we treat as, easy, that's you know, oh, yeah. as those. That's but yeah, definitely yourself. on my side, I have um, an adult niece and nephew and then um, two nephews who are now eight and <laughs> seven. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah. Eight and seven. All right, all right. How do you celebrate your marriage? Like it, like anniversary wise, or no, just just, just it's, it's Tuesday like, you know, and I love yeah, being married. Yeah, yeah. So. Or y'all have a date night, or I mean, people have all kind of ways. Oh, we're hard. we're yeah. pretty active around town. I mean, if it's just going to get a drink, if it's going to get uh, our big thing has become um, frozen yogurt. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Frozen yogurt a lot. I didn't know what frozen yogurt was until. I <laughs> Before I met her, I didn't know what I didn't I didn't know what wine tasting was before I met her. I think one of the one of our first experiences was uh, she had a friend come to town, yes. and you know I called. I was like, oh, so where are you? She was like, oh, I'm over by the Capitol uh, with a friend. She was like, oh, what are you what are y'all up to? Are y'all campaigning or something? She said, no, we're just sitting down in front on a blanket drinking wine. Was, I was kind of perplexed. I was like, so. <laughs> And what else, right? <laughs> what else is happening? What else is happening? She's like, no, that's the event, right? So I didn't, I didn't know a thing about it, um, but. And now he's a total wine snob. Not a wine snob. He's, a, just, he's a wine snob. I've learned some things, <laughs> and I put them into practice, right? I know. There's no point in me learning something if I'm not gonna put it into practice. So mm -hmm. there've been, you know, her. She got me started, and there've been a, a few friends that we've gone out with that I must credit um, for, you know, helping to build the education, helping to build the knowledge base. So. Not a snob though. <laughs> no, just, hey. just, just, just I know some things. Hey, some you had kind of that, that, that nod going. No, like, yeah, like hey, wine hey, hey, taste. Hey, so, what's your favorite wine? I like uh, Cabernet. I like a good Cabernet, um, or maybe a blend of the sort. But yeah, Cabernet. Is, That's what's up. Is I like me. that. So, mm -hmm. say if y'all live to be married for fifty years, uh, what do you hope that you always would keep in your marriage? You look over and y'all just face, Sonny. No. <laughs> no, what would you want, you know? Uh, I mean. 50 years of marriage. That's a lot of time. You would, I mean, the, the, the Well, sensitive. he said he doesn't want to live to be that old. <laughs> I just want to. I, like, I just. Like, I just. The I want to. I'm out. I want to remain. I just want to. I want to remain mobile. I want to remain mobile. I don't want to just be, you know, grandpa sitting in the corner. You know, they just turn me and face me. Oh. And, you know, he's okay. He can't see anyway, right? He don't know what's going yeah, on. Just, we don't yeah, even know yeah, we don't even know he's here. Just put a blanket on him or something. Right. Maybe, wow. you know, treat me like the old Christmas tree or yeah. something, right? But um, I would say, I mean, I want to say keep a sense of humor, but that almost seems kind of generic because you ain't going to get that far if you don't, you know, keep a good sense of humor. Um, I would just say keep, keep regular activity. Um, so, you know, as far as like going for walks, um, trying to get, uh, go catch a movie, um, Froyo, wine, just something where you, we can just keep like, this is something that we've always done. Um, and it's always made us happy. So let's just try to keep a regular schedule of events, um, that we're able to do. 
So that's what that's what I would say. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I think that's great. Um, along those same lines, we've had season tickets for the Kings for what are we in set year six, seven, six, six or so, seven. So, I think yeah, there, there was seven. like a partial year. Yeah. So. so pretty much our entire relationship, we've been going to Kings games, whether a few wow. or the whole season, and exactly. so. Um, I'd love to keep that, you know, keep that <laughs> tradition going and us being able to go to the games together and be able to go back. they put on the big screen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Are they talking Shake to us? Is that us? Yeah. 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 We just so, so, yeah. We just had a kiss game. <laughs> 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 Hold on. Let me put my dentures Yeah, right? So, so it'd be fun. It'd be something like that. And we know some older couples there. Yeah. Or not older couples, but older people. That, yeah, older couples there. Yeah. That are there have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. So, you know, we just kinda we look at them, we're like, Yeah, that's life goals. Yeah. That's life goals. I know. Yeah. What things are you looking to improve in your marriage? Things you want to get better on at uh the dishwasher side of <laughs> Besides him just accepting <laughs> that the function is in the title. Y'all. It says dishwasher, what does not dishwasher dry rack. Do? I don't understand. <laughs> it washes dishes. He's like, No, no, I'm gonna wash the dishes in the sink and then put them in there to dry. But then I have dirty dishes that I want to put in the dish. Me. So you said what, what we what we're we looking to, make? to improve things that you're gonna improve in your marriage. Just um, I would like at some point to be able to match her level of energy, I guess, because you know when she, you know, and everybody knows if they know us, right? You know, we walk in to the place. You know, she goes right down the middle by crowd, and I kind of creep my way around the outside, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I kind of creep my way around the outside. I kind of say hello to people yeah. as I pass by, where she's just right in the mark. Yeah. If we go out to I eat, you know, it's a big table like this. She's right in the middle, and I find my way to the corner, you know, just kind of. So wow. it would be good to, you know, one day just kind of get, get a little bit more comfortable. Right um, and just be the couple that walks in and just sticks together, because we'll branch off quickly. You know, <laughs> we'll branch off. <laughs> Quickly, because People, you don't want to. You don't want to sit there. Like, no, we're fine. We're here together. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, I kissed her when we walked in. I'm gonna kiss her when we walk out. Right. 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 Just, you know. So just for this is just this is just me though. Just to you know, um, <laughs> little less, <laughs> little less introverted at some of our events. Um, Take that. Things to work. Just to improve on it. Yeah, just I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess the the big one is always communication. I think you can yeah. never go wrong saying you want to mm -hmm. just keep making sure that those lines are open and that you're really comfortable talking about anything, even the stupid, even the ridiculous, even the mundane, even the, you know, like whatever it is that we can always. You know, because you're going to have other relationships in your life. You're going to have your other friendships. But mm -hmm. that that we are always the person that we think of wanting to tell that crazy thing to first <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and being able to talk about, you know, our feelings when something isn't working for us. Or right. when, you know, one, that was one of the things that I said before we go. I was like, we kind of have this. We'll, we'll, you know, be on Marco Polo and we'll talk to each other and whatever else. But if at any point this distance isn't working, we will make it, we'll make adjustments. We will yeah. increase the visits. I will come and stay for a period of time. Yeah. You can come, like, we'll make this work because this is a priority for us. And so yeah. don't be afraid to say, I, it's not working for me right now and I need more FaceTime because we'll make yeah. that happen, you know? Christy said, ask about the calendar. <laughs> so we have a shared <laughs> calendar. We have a shared calendar that Tareen likes to act like uh. he can't access. Even though every time I look on his phone, all of the things that have been added to the calendar are on the calendar. I just want, with this calendar, tell me as you're putting it on the calendar. I try to. So, Thursday comes and, you know, it's one of those, are you, you ready to go? And I'm like, oh, are we, we going somewhere, right? And she's like, oh, it's on the calendar, right? And I'm like, this is the first time yeah. I've heard of it. Uh, now, it is on me. I, to check the calendar, but there are times it's like, let me know, you know, just verbalize it to me, right? Tell me, you know, on Thursday we're doing something, don't just put it on the calendar, right? So that's kind of been, I could check the calendar every day. As one should. <laughs> I could check the calendar every day, right? Like, like, that's what I'm not. And then the other thing is, this, when, when <laughs> there are events that he wants to go to, they never end up on the calendar. So I, tell her, I just comes, tell her. I said, I was like, I was like, babe, let me know what we're doing for New Year's Eve, right? 
he's like, cool. And then he sends me these three options. He's like, pick. I'm like, no, I'm not picking. You figure it out, right? I was like, because that's the way I like to operate. Yeah, he always even wants me when, to give him three even options. Even when it came down to the marriage, right? She's like, what what colors do you, you know? There's like cups. What kind of cups do you want to use? What kind of plates do you want to use? You know, what kind of tablecloths? And I always say, give me three options, right? If you want to live down to three, I'll. I'll knock out the last one. So I tried to give her the Not same thing. Not just that, thing, but he'll have very strong opinions on it, too. Like, as we were planning this wedding, Doreen had very strong... No, 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 I, that's not the vision that I have for this. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, you got a vision now. So he gave me these three options, and I was like, no, honestly, you choose. I just, I don't feel like reading. I'm just, I'm in vacation mode. Just figure it out. But then the 31st comes along, and it's like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. I'm like, where are we going? What should I have on? Like, what do I, you know, like, I need some deep, like, where are we, like, what time do I need to be ready? Like, I, so I, I pull up my phone, open up the calendar, there's nothing on the calendar. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't, I don't know what we're doing for New Year's Eve because there's nothing we're on my calendar. We're going to New Year's on New Year's <laughs> Eve. Okay, so just put some clothes on and let's go. What clothes? Because it could have been a disaster New because Year's I was going to wear something sleeveless because I thought we were going to a party and the part and Drake's barn has an outdoor section. And so that could have been a disaster. Because I had no details. This is why you put it on the calendar. Like tonight was on the calendar. But right? she knew we was going out on New Year's to tonight one of those three the locations. But the see? location was on the calendar. <laughs> he had no questions about what time he needed to be where to pick me up to get here because it was all on the calendar. But the event didn't come out of nowhere. She knew something was happening that night at that time. <laughs> she knew something was happening. She didn't know everything that was happening, but she knew <laughs> something. That was happening, right? And you also try to keep it a surprise, right? I mean, it's New Year's, and I know she had to be, but even for her birthday, right? There's sometimes we'll go out, and it's like, I don't, I want to have her prepared, but I don't want to have her so prepared that she kind of knows what's going on, so. Could you just block off the time on the calendar? Or I could just <laughs> tell her. Couple outings. You can just tell her to be ready it's by seven. It's a surprise. Be ready by seven, and you know we don't even need. Ready to, me. We don't even need to do this calendar, right? Are we outside? Should, can I wear suede shoes? Will it rain? Like I got questions. Y'all so cute. Y'all make a great balance. <laughs> That's what makes y'all so cute. My final question is: What advice would you give to single people who want to be married? In the infamous words of Lashawn Francis, "I've been married for thirty seconds. I don't have any advice for anybody." <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I said, she's like, ask me what I've been married for like 50 or 60 years. I don't have any advice for anybody. Um, and I kind of feel, I kind of agree with her on this one. It's like, I certainly don't have any advice about marriage. I can tell you what has seemed to work for us. Um, I know for me, the big thing has always been we create our own rules. And that was mm -hmm. something that we said to each other in our vows was we didn't do traditional vows. Um, we made a series of promises to each other. And one of them was that and my vows were based on running because we're both runners. And so it was all about like, you know, I won't promise that I won't ever get upset, but I promise, you know, I'll put on my rain boots and run through those hills and through the rain with you. Um, and one of the things we said was that our marriage will be our own. And so we won't let other people's expectations um, or even what, we, what society says a marriage is supposed to look like define mm. for us what works for us. Like we right have to be independent about that. Um, so, I, I mean, I, if anything, it's not really good advice that, like, you know, like, that concrete advice, but set your own rules. Like, it might not work for you to do the thing that, you know, you saw on TV that Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv did to keep their marriage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that might not work for you. What works for you is going to be something different. And so, for some it's people, long time. distance wouldn't work. But we knew up front mm -hmm. that wherever he was going to go, we, we could make that work because we would figure out ways. And also, he's an introvert, so he's probably even a little happier be having less time with me um <laughs> i say that all not the time true. he's like that's not true <laughs> um but you know like just set like create your own rules whatever it is that works for the two of you is okay um but if it doesn't then you have to revisit it but if it works for the two of you everybody else be damned because you two are the only people in the that's relationship fine. yeah yeah i would just say um uh don't expect for and this is just in general not pertaining to us so much but don't expect for marriage to be um, what changes the relationship because if things are iffy before you get married, mm -hmm. they're not gonna snap into place after you get married, right? If you've got issues it's in certain categories and areas before you get married, the ring, the ceremony, that's not gonna change some of those issues. So, you know, just really work out your issues before you decide to, you know, um, jump the broom. And if there are things that you know you can handle, that may never change, mm -hmm. you know, then yeah, go ahead and go for it. But you know, if you're kind of on edge, then you know, 
take your time and figure some things out. You know, learn a little bit more about the other person, talk a little bit more to the other person, and you know, when the time is right, have at it. Wow, that's great advice. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. I think that that makes a lot of sense. I like that. That over. Oh, oh go ahead, Viv. That. Makes <laughs> Thank well, I used so to much. use the Huxtables, but you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've had to go to my other is, example. Well, I mean, you know, people don't really care. I mean, people still, I ain't going to say it because yeah. I was watching it today. So anyway, thank y'all so much. Thank you. For making time thank you for to come me. in. This, this is a great conversation. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> y'all fit right in with each other, though, honestly. If you had two people that, you, you know, y'all be, mm. but there's a balance there. Very and good. and uh, Christy says that um, basically you are like a moral police <laughs> for friends and mates. <laughs> and that all her future moves will have to meet you Oh, first. he absolutely is. I do I have to that. tell this one story before okay. we go. No, go ahead. It's hilarious. He knows exactly what story I'm about to tell. So, we went out to this roller skating party. Oh, I With our friend, yes. With our <laughs> friend Akiva, right? Okay. okay. Um, and, and he, at one point she said, oh, there was a guy that she was supposed to go out on a date with and he canceled on her or whatever. And she pointed to that guy. the guy. Okay. Yeah. Very clearly pointed to the guy. We're out the roller skating Later room. in the night, another guy comes up that is friends with our friend Jessica and introduces himself to her and me and him. And when he gets to Tareen, Tareen is like, what's up, man? Whatever. The guy she pointed to was the same guy that came by afterwards. Was not. It was the Absolutely same was guy not. that it came by afterwards. It was a completely different guy. It was not a different guy. <laughs> completely different guy. I was just kind of weirded out by it. But. Completely different guy. So he gives this cold shoulder to this guy. I'm standing there like, oh my God, what? what? Why is he acting so crazy? We get outside. He turns to her and is like, how dare you introduce yourself to a guy who stood you up for a date? That's not even cool. That's not how we do this. Like, and y'all all introducing yourselves like everything is good. He canceled on her. That's not, and we were like, oh, oh wrong guy. I'm so guy. glad it you were guy. so <laughs> in the face. It was, was the guy. You were so hard And it wasn't my face. reaction. It was, I, I was just like, I was just person. I was just like, no, I was just like, I was like, just have some self esteem. Have some he pride. Said, he was just kind of like, uh, like he was it wasn't, like, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't shrug him off. It, was I, it wasn't a cold, cold shoulder. He was just like, hey, how's it going? I was like, yeah, all right, man. Right? It was quick. It wasn't, oh, right? You know what I mean? I didn't turn my cape to him or anything like that. It was, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It was just like, yeah, all right, man. All right. That was it. Right? So, you know, so I, I, I just told yeah. him, I was like, you know, just just have some more self-respect, right? Like, he, he canceled, <laughs> he canceled on you, right? You don't need to... You, know, you don't but need to act like everything's good, right? If he's a jerk, you can treat him like a jerk. You're all right. Right. We're all grown ups here. Wow. You know? So he does. He definitely like his loyalty game is on one hundred. He will ride for the people he really cares about, I, and to 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 a fault sometimes. If he gets <laughs> if he gets wrong, he's gonna shoot first and ask questions later. The guy she pointed at. That was not no, that's the, the same guy. dude. It's the same dude. Not, no. If it wasn't the same dude, then I would even to this not. day because this was God. years ago. To this day, nope. Nope. and then maybe she wrong pointed guy. at the wrong guy. The guy that was the guy that she pointed at. So oh, if no. she got no, you didn't follow the, the wrong line. Guy, you had to follow the tangent. Fine. You got to follow the tangent all I the didn't. way out. You stopped. And I didn't. You, I didn't. Well, we were going here. The sister knew she was protected. She did. She that did. somebody was, you know, just in case. Examples are good. Just in case, right? Keep, yeah, keep you self esteem up. You know, we said just in case you thought about it. You right, know, right, you right, know. right. <laughs> Right, lady, don't put up with that. That's like you get tripped. I said, well, I just thought, just in case you're thinking about it. Yeah, like, what? yeah. So, <laughs> y'all are adorable. That was a great story, though. Hey, y'all, thank you so much. Um, I'll see y'all next later on this week with another interview. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get up and turn this thing off. Oh yeah, my battery. Yeah, it's, it's it's good though. We still in there. Boop boop. Okay, that means it's all good.